Alright, welcome to another video. We were out of action last week because I was in Australia visiting clients, but this week we're back onto it. And uh, this time we're going to be looking at topic number four in this edition of the weekly macro themes from a few weeks ago. And um, this one is S&P 500 correlations. So yeah, pretty interesting edition overall this week. But yeah, this is a pretty interesting topic because it's an indicator that not many people look at or necessarily know how to use. So, I mean, it's it's very much a cousin to the CBOE VIX or Implied Volatility Index. So it's, you know, it's also based on the S&P 500 and it's also derived of option prices. But before we dive into details, a quick look at the uh, bottom line. So this is how the format usually goes. Bit of story, bit of narrative, bit of um, tying it all together. The bottom line and the charts. Now the bottom line is this. The implied correlation index provides some insight into short-term market peaks and troughs. At present it is pointing to a potential short-term top. So let's get into that. Why is it pointing to a potential top? Well, the first point is um, just having a look at it on the the chart here. Now, as a on a sort of um, procedural note or a detail note, uh, this red line here is the implied correlation index. It is shown inverted, so upside down. So you can see there that the higher numbers are down there and the smaller numbers are down there. And basically, what we're saying here is that when correlations spike. So become very high, as you can see there, I'm pointing to the 2012 and 2011 sort of market correction episodes. When it peaks and goes very, or, you know, spikes from its typical range of the, you know, preceding period, that often happens during a market bottom. And, you know, let's think about why that might happen, because, you know, it's it's not really that useful to just go out and try and find correlations or, you know, into relationships. You've got to try and think about why there should actually be a reason for that. And if you think about a correction, a market correction, a risk off episode, whenever you have panic in the market, correlations tend to, as a rule, tend to converge towards one. You know, in the most extreme scenarios, you know, everything, everything becomes correlated. And that's what you tend, you've seen, you know, oftentimes when you get a sell off here, you can see there in 2014, the dual corrections in 2015, early 2016, you know, had spikes from its t typical range. And, you know, going into the 2008 collapse there, you can see massive spike there from its typical range prior to that. Now the other signal that you can get from it is when it goes in the opposite direction, so when it becomes very low. And, you know, it's it's basically the opposite scenario. When the market is topping out short term, you can get a situation of low correlations for a couple of reasons. First one is, you know, low correlations may actually reflect an emerging weakness in the market because, you know, it can reflect that, you know, some stocks are doing good and other stocks are not doing so good. So that can be, you know, one rationale for that. And, um, and you know, just a sort of, I guess, a lack of um, a bit of complacency around it. Now, it's important to look at this because we're actually seeing this right now. And um, I've actually gone and updated this chart. So we'll go across and have a look at that. So you can see here the chart being updated. Now, yeah, it's up, up to date with the latest data. And you know, as I mentioned before, um, in terms of the actual construction of this indicator. So if you look into the implied correlation index, like if you went to the CBOE website, you'll probably have noticed that there's all these JCJs and KCJs and ICJs, etc. And what you'll probably pretty quickly notice is that they are 
a little bit unusual from say the VIX so let's have a look at this for example the ICJ from January 2016 so if you just do a quick chart and see there that it just you know travels along and then it falls down like that now that's if we look at the subsequent one the JCJ from January 2017 chuck a quick chart together on that and see that it also does this thing I mean towards the end it becomes a little bit crazy and it also drops off and just to round it out KCJ from January 2015 Let's bring that down. Again, it's doing the same thing. They, they sort of about, I guess, the last few months or the last sort of quarter of the whole period, it has this tendency to drop off and go a little bit crazy. And that's just down to um, the way that the, the index is put together. So they rotate through the indexes there. And when you're putting it together, you as... Um, as an actual usable indicator you have to actually switch so you know at this point we're using the ICJ from January 2019 whereas earlier was using the KCJ so you have to switch otherwise you're going to get distorted signals and then also just um, Applying a five days moving helps to present a clearer picture because we're all about using signal rather than noise and getting as pure an expression of the signal as possible. Now, one thing that I would point out on this updated chart is, um, and again, we'll do a little bit of live analysis here. So I'm just going to draw a straight line because there's a little bit of an optical illusion going on here. I think so yeah you can see there I don't know if I'll quite draw the line straight but it's basically is just slightly lower than the point there and so the indexes were only launched in um, that 2007 part there um, and you can see there that it's had its lowest point since prior to the financial crisis so that's a good headline a good sound bite there I might have to roll that out on, when I put this video out but you can see there that it is, yeah, indicative of a potential short-term top. Now, this indicator, pretty similar to the VIX, works better in picking market bottoms than picking the market tops. But certainly another piece of information to add into the mix. Now, thinking about correlations in general, I also wanted to point out these. So this is a look at realized correlations. Now the implied correlation index uh, deals with individual stocks but we're, for simplicity I've chosen to do this analysis on sector pairwise correlations. So we've got here realized rolling sector pairwise correlations. So this is one month and 12 month correlations of daily returns. And you can see there that it's the index there shown in black really does move in line with realized correlations which you know you'd expect implied volatility moves with realized volatility now the where it gets really interesting here is the that analysis rolled out to a longer time period so back to 95 you can see there that it's at extraordinarily low levels and uh, here I've updated that as well other shorter version of the chart here we go so yeah look at this is dropped off to levels that we last saw leading up to the peak of the dot-com period now this, again this is why I point out that you know low correlations can be an indicator of a market top but this is more a reflection that you know again that it's probably a reflection that one or two sectors are doing extremely well versus other sectors potentially doing not so well or or badly and 
you know, this was the case going into dot com. Obviously, it was all about telecoms and IT, and, and you know, the other sectors were lagging, and particularly, actually, you know, you had a bit of issues in the commodity sectors around 98, 99. But you can see there that, you know, again, a bit of a headline grabber is um, realized sector pairwise correlations are back to 2000 levels. So it's, it's, Again, this one is not as useful as a timing indicator. This isn't probably better as a, a means of characterizing the prevailing market regime. And you can see there that in this post-crisis period, you know, this is when that sort of 2008 to, I guess, 2013 was kind of when it stopped. That risk-on, risk-off environment, um, probably a familiar term, if you're around then, you know, when a lot of markets and stocks sectors were all trading fairly much in line with each other and very much driven by macro factors. Whereas, you know, I guess it's more sector specific and I've done another piece on this, actually, you think in the same edition here on how, yeah, so if you look at this chart here, return attribution by sector. So the bulk of returns over the last three months, six months, one year, and even the three year, five year period is coming from IT and financials. And, you know, that was kind of similar to what you saw in the dot com period there. The bulk of returns, you know, this is percentage point contribution, were driven by the technology sector. So, you know, we're seeing a few things that are sort of reminiscent of that period you know and that the bulk of returns are being driven by well not just one sector but two sectors this time financials and technology so it's certainly something to think about and in the short term from timing standpoint the fact that this here chart has gone to extreme levels you always want to pay attention when things go to extremes is something to pay attention to and it lines up with uh, you know a few other things we're seeing a bit of froth short-term in sentiment. My broader view on the US stock market is that, you know, we're not on the cusp of a bear market because there's very little evidence to suggest that, you know, typically for a bear market you need to see things start to deteriorate on a fundamental level and we're, we're definitely not seeing that. But that does not preclude the possibility of a you know sharp sell-off or a correction which I think is growing in prob probability by the day but again you know thinking about the framework that we use you start with valuation you add on what's going on with monetary policy monetary conditions you look at what's going on with the economy and the earnings the actual fundamentals and then you look at other factors like sentiment and technicals and in that respect, you know, yes, valuations are high, and that is certainly a red flag, but the, but the other factors haven't lined up. You know, you need the stars to align in order to gain, to build a high conviction view of a major trend or major turning point like that. And for now, you know, odds are that we get a correction, and unless those monetary economic indicators really start to turn, then, um, you know, We'll have to look at the indicators at the time, but it'll probably be a correction to buy into. So that's it for now. Uh, if you've got any questions or comments, if you want to get a copy of this report or any other the work that we've done, you know, take a trial, then just get in touch. Otherwise, uh, yeah, be sure to subscribe to the channel because we'll be putting more of this kind of videos out in the weeks ahead.